you know, you look at this list of uh, the most influential international um, thinkers in HR, and a disproportionate number are American. And you write and promulgate things which uh, make sound sense. But what I always feel is that there's a huge discontinuity, a bigger discontinuity, between what's said in the world of HR kind of intellectuals in the States and what actually happens on the ground. Yeah. And actually you are, it's a big and widening gulf. Is that fair or not? Uh, I mean, I think it is fair to some extent. It, I mean, I think that you, you see people like Dave Ulrich, who really is, you know, yeah. without a doubt, the, yeah. the, yeah. the, the big paradigm figure. leader within the field. And he's been, you know, talking about the things that HR should do for years. Um, one of the things that I, I had an email communication with him where he was talking about how frustrating it is that he's been talking about this for years and yet you just don't see movement in the field. Um, you look at Ed Lawler's research where they've you know, seen this stuff, they do a survey about every five years of, of HR practitioners, uh, they ask them how much time they're spending in different activities, and I think the last survey they did, they see that there's been no change in, in the percent of time that they spend in transactional activities you know, over the last roughly 20 years now. So I think you know, you're right in that there is a lot of communication about what should be done. It's not necessarily clear that it's happening on the it's, ground. It's not just commu communication. It's absolutely you know, A1 thinking. I mean, it's not, I mean, I think this, you know, to migrate from transactional to, to the strategic and all the rest of it. And actually, you know, the few remarks I made here, I mean, I've become a kind of really uh, a kind of proselytizer for open innovation. But you can't turn any company inside out so that it faces externally for to external influence and then internalizes it without people who really kind of own the mission, values, and purpose of that company. You're a CEO, you're driving a company forward, you buy that. Next question, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Uh, how, are you going to, you know, how are you going to get your staff to do this? How are they going to own this? How are they going to build trust relationships with the app, with the uh, with you know outside contractors, outside partners, outside supply chains, unless they themselves own a sense of purpose and values of that particular company? So yeah. you're immediately into your world as a strategic HR instantly, and you know, and I think that these two stories have to be married up. And I think when you see folks, I, I'll, I'll point to Kevin Cox in American Express. I mean, yeah. he's a guy who really is thinking commercially constantly about you know, uh, presenting ideas about you know, maybe this is a direction we need to move strategically that has nothing to do with HR, <coughs> but is really, you know, if this is the direction of the financial services and the payments industry, you know, have we thought about doing you know, some different form of payment? I mean, it's a whole different way of actually thinking about how a company operates. And, you know, and look, and the best in HR understand this completely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe this, is, maybe this is the way to kind of, you know, uh, to have the breakthrough, you know, which people have been groping for for the best part of a generation. You know, how are we going to persuade um, you know, boards to take this agenda seriously? And I think this is, well, certainly my suggestion of the way in.